Hi, Sharon. Assalamu alaikum. Sharuki, you're on mute. I realized. Okay, <laughs> I'm such a grandmother. <laughs> Hi, Nabila. Check Hi, Sharuki. Sammy over here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I have a small confession. Um, the topic of today, like when you say culture, like you mean like social media culture or like culture, 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 culture. <laughs> Good to know. Before we start, I just. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm glad you asked now. Yeah, we're doing things. Oh, by the way. Nabila, great TikTok, uh, and Shanuki, great video on um, the cruelty thing. I really love that. I still have oh, to yeah, watch. Uh... I'm, I'm... Go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm. I said uh, ironic that I'm going to be talking about culture right now because I'm having humongous arguments with a lot of haters. Who are oh, really? really? I ca video. I can't imagine. Yeah. I honestly can't imagine the amount of backlash oh, you get. Hey. I knew that this one was going to bring in a lot more because the religion and culture argument also. Yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Hi. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Hi, guys. Hi, Sorry guys. I'm a bit late. That's okay, no worries. Uh, okay, so before we begin our conversation, uh, I'll just give a brief introduction about Reach because we've had Sharon with us already and I think he knows about us. But to Shanuki, Nabila and Dolinda, I'll just give a brief introduction about us. So we are a youth-led community trying to solve environmental, economic and societal issues one step at a time. And we've, uh, we founded REACH in late, in late 2019, oh no, sorry, early 2019, and we've done three projects so far, and we've launched our recent project. Um, our first project was at a school in uh, Angulana. We prepared their uh, resource room and we refurbished their playground. And our second project was right after the Easter bomb attacks. We uh, uh, we purchased some essential items and provided to the Nigambu General Hospital. And also we helped few uh, victims on a personal level. And after that, our recent project was Samata Atvelak, where we uh, collected uh, essential items from uh, schools and people in Colombo and donated it to uh, two, uh, two schools at Kalpiti and Ingiria uh, that was close to 340 children. It was mostly clothes, books and essential items like that. And our, re our next project is going to be about uh, sustaining livelihoods. So for our pilot phase, we are planning to select three low income families and help them build a business. Uh, that's the idea. We are still in the launch phase. We've still not started the project. We're still collecting funds and looking out for families. We would be glad if you all can give us a few families. We'll do our back checks and then start the project. Um, so that's about us. Uh, we should have another moderator from Reach side, that's Pranit. Sharon already knows him. He'll be joining us in a while. But before that, uh, let's do something interesting. So I would like each of you to tell something that none of us know about you. Like it can be, it can be weird, it can be anything just anything uh so let's start off with sharon has a very weird look so let's start off with sharon <laughs> i'm actually thinking because like i'm literally the most transparent person on instagram like i don't know what people don't know so i'm gonna go last if that's okay yeah cool uh so nabila do you want to go so I tell people I like tea, but I secretly drink a lot of coffee and I don't tell people that. I don't know if that's a good thing. What a yeah, answer. Completely. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, the scandal. <laughs> I got it. Hello, hello everyone. My apologies for the delay. Hey, buddy. Uh, we are just hey, going to see you again. Nice to see you, man. Yeah. Okay, who's next? Uh, Shanuki? Yeah, I, I don't know what's secret about me. Everybody knows, even if I go to the toilet, I tell the world. Um, <laughs> I bite my toenails. I used oh! to do that as a kid. 
How I old skills, bro? Mad skills. I used to do that as a kid. I I'm not as flexible anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the only bit of flexibility I have left in me at this age. <laughs> <laughs> that's super interesting mm. like i i love that you put that out there cuz like people are just like oh you don't talk about this but i'm just like dulinda dulinda ah dulinda your turn ah uh, mm, mm, okay i wow okay i i i'm scared of cockroaches and butterflies i don't know whether that qualifies it it qualifies cockroaches yes. here yes butterflies you have a problem <laughs> I, it's a thing no. it's actually a thing i know i know it's a thing yeah yeah i'm i'm, I'm just scared like if if one gets into the room by any chance my mom has to get rid of it for me yeah uh pranit is that all yeah what's up hi Tell the uh, one thing that none of us know about you. I mean, I'm also, sure guys, others don't know. Also, guys, so Shanuki, your secret of biting your toenails is going to come out just so you know. That's okay, we do. It's fine. <laughs> we can edit that for her if she wants, but as long no, as she's okay. I, I, I don't have an issue. One more thing that the world doesn't need to know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pranit, you go. Something that people don't uh, know about you. Uh, I'm afraid of heights. I guess I don't know. That's not. I mean, that's pretty common, though. Uh, okay, I have one. Okay, I'll figure it out. Okay. Yes, Sharon, go. Okay, so uh, people call me as this highly socialite, sociable person who loves to talk to people, but I actually hate big crowds. I'm just like, please leave me alone and leave me to my devices. I'm highly introverted. That's interesting. Okay, so uh, yeah, next I think I'll just introduce Pranit for you all. Um, Pranit has been a member of Reach since its first project in 2019, and he's one of our most amazing de- designers and content writers behind some of our social media posts, and also an occasional host of Reach Foundation's IG lives. uh the one with sharan pranith hosted it and he's sarcastic yet passionate about current affairs history and film anything that goes on our social media related to current affairs is mostly his content and he currently works as a coder and consultant at democracy reporting international analyzing underlay, underlying narratives evident in the discourse of politics and social media platforms yes that's pranith for all guys Thank you Akshay it was really nice of you um okay moving on to Akshay so she's one of uh, the core members of Reach Foundation she's someone who is pretty much essential to the running of our social media campaign so those things that i create more or less have to go through Akshay um for her approval to you know go on for social media handles eventually um she is currently working as a trade research executive at Papercube Consultants Sri Lanka and uh, having completed her masters in psychology um it isn't really surprising to see how passionate she is about helping people uh if she is not crunching on research analysis or helping people you'd probably find her reading cooking or eating let's talk share for you guys thank you thank you so much pranit uh over to pranit to carry on the conversation Sure. So is it, we've we've gone through the icebreaker zone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's a, cool. Cool. Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's get right to basically the crux of the conversation. As you guys know, it's about culture, and um, we're not really narrowing it down or sort of narrow, basically putting it down to what kind of culture we want to talk about. So it's basically open to um, you know gender or ethnic or even a national identity or how that um, perception of culture comes about. um and also we don't want to make this sort of barrage of questions coming from Aksha and I where people constantly paper you with questions with barrage you with questions and you know we expect answers we'd like to make it a discussion so um anything we ask you know that can go to anyone anyone else who has an interest can add to that can have an opinion can have an experience and you are you know you're more than welcome to throw a few questions at us as well because uh, I think we culture is something that is fluid and I think something that is always evolving and it's also something that is subjective because our uh, our perceptions our experiences are different from one another depending on how we have grown up the experiences that we've been through 
um yeah and basically that's how we'd like it to be more or less in terms of that discussion um having said that though we'd like to start off with um asking each of you with a question that we kind of put down based on our understanding of how you communicate your viewership um and we hope that that might also give a formal introduction since we had the ice breaker rounds i don't know to someone who doesn't know you if that might be enough to you know get a good idea of who we are who you are um so yeah having said that uh i'd like to start off with shanuki um so basically my question you, is <laughs> it's it just happens to be the first stop there so i'm just going to go into that um what are some of the cultural taboos in sri lankan society that you noticed that made you want to reform and change perceptions through your talk show and social media efforts basically something you saw before you started your talk show and then something yeah basically that you seen changes happening in as well because of your being here about it um i think sri lanka itself is a cultural taboo if you ask me <laughs> there's there's so much uh, good out there and, and i in this particular zoom room i think amongst all of you i might be the oldest person here so i might have seen and experienced my fair share of culture uh, a bit more um and i just want to put it out there before i become like this whole tradition hater image out there uh, there's a lot i like about sri lankan culture and when i say sri lankan culture the the multicultural the multifaceted cultures that we have right and uh, there's lots of like really interesting really unique uh, traditions and rituals and uh, beliefs that uh, we kind of developed as a society um that are very very interesting and uh, form a sense of identity and you know i i i enjoy uh, learning about them and i really take pride in a lot of them as well i think they think they're pretty cool that said uh, we also have a lot of um, i don't know, culture uh, a lot of things that we call culture um are kind of these these social behaviors that have evolved over time and now have kind of uh, we we kind of ignore their roots sometimes and uh, we we don't know of their origins we're kind of ignorant of those things and then we call it culture when it really isn't and we have i think one of the biggest uh, cultural taboos uh, that i can think of is these things that we we put down as culture or we put down as religion um this this misinterpretation that over time society has decided to turn traditions and culture so like these community practices have turned into suddenly the claim to it to have some sort of religious origins or or religious uh, uh foundations which they don't uh so for instance i mean uh, taboos like uh the use of animals in cultural parades which we now fight saying no no it's religion and therefore it must stay when it comes to gender there are so many behaviors and the patriarchy uh, has decided to put down like rules on gender and especially women and girls uh the uh, like rules of behavior or rules of propriety um that we say this is our culture it is not really a culture if you go back in history and if you sort of examine ancient communities and all that none of that rubbish was there but now we say oh this is culture and this is what we're proud of and we kind of subjugate and um almost uh, control uh, the female population with it uh so yeah uh, i would say cultural things that we have um, we have made in culture an excuse for things like that uh, i would say that's what i would call the taboos i don't know i don't know if i necessarily agree that they are actually culture um but yeah uh, things things about what how women should behave for instance or uh, the culture of expressing love uh, you know amongst people out there in public or to each other or whatever the culture of what kind of love is allowed in sri lanka if you take the lgbtq community for instance you have this thing of saying no 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 that's not our culture uh, 
uh, rubbish, you know. So those, I think, are the main cultural taboos that I would um, identify. But I think everywhere I look now, there's no end of topics that keep coming up for the show because everything is sort of passed off as this is our culture, uh, which are highly argument uh, arguable. All right, thanks. And just just to follow up, would you, would you think that um, you speaking about them, do you think that in certain sections of society that you might have changed things, bringing that conversation to the table? I think uh, it's what? not just because I'm speaking about it, but it's simply because it's the age of information, right? There's a lot more education, awareness and information out there. And uh, the newer generations are practicing a little more critical thinking than the older ones. In Sri Lanka, there's again this this whole um, behavior that everybody is used to. That you just accept what your grandparents told you or what has been passed down to you by your ancestry. You don't question it. You just keep continuing practices, uh, regardless of the fact that it might be cruel or it might be unethical or immoral or whatever it is. But because the world is evolving, the newer generations are evolving along with it, with more exposure to other uh, mindsets, other cultures, the immersion of other cultures into our, our uh, country uh, and with that exposure with that knowledge a lot of things are being rethought and reconsidered and so you have like these pockets of advocacies and activism kind of coming out and pushing harder against the system and you know uh, and because of that people are questioning it so i don't think it's because of the show the show is merely a mirror it's just reflecting what's going on in society right now whatever we are talking about we are not the ones who instigate those conversations we're just sort of taking a leaf out of other people's books and then having our guests doing that you know the the guests who come on the show are part of that uh, advocacy and part of that change and the show is just merely a platform to sort of give them one more area to throw their voice um but I do think that with more knowledge, with, with more information, which uh, young people are starting to discuss and stopping uh, just, just not uh, accepting things simply because, you know, simply because, uh, I think that's what's changing the country's mentality and mindset on a lot of things. All right, thank you. Um, moving on to Dulinda. So I think that question is more based on his areas of expertise, I would think. So the question is, what do you think of our country's business culture in terms of establishing a business and carrying out entrepreneurship? And are there certain customs unique to our own culture that you've seen affecting the formation and growth of a business? Um, well, yeah, um, I'll actually, I'll try to... Uh, answer that question by putting in a little bit of an addiction to uh, what uh, Chanki uh, mentioned a little earlier. I think I spot on agree this is something that I really really wanted to speak about as well when you guys mentioned that the whole um, the context of the today's conversation is culture. Uh, I think uh, she hit the nail right on the head itself. I think there is a lot of misconception that certain bullshit that society has produced has been narrowed down and connected to religion which gives them a divine interpretation and is named and branded as if this should not be challenged right now at the point of inception where it is divine where it is showcased as divine it, it is stopped from being challenged and that's the point which hinders change and um, you know any liberal thinking youth or uh, you know middle-aged people or so and so forth anybody is being drawn back by that that hindrance that is the main constraint i believe that we need to break it down as i move on i mean see uh, i'm a roman catholic myself and um, coming down from my religion i can cite like serious examples which we believe as the rule of god but if you refer to the scriptures god never said something of that sort right but it has been interpreted as the rule of god um that being said coming back to your question about um, business and and the culture of sri lankans that hinders i think that is a little bit 
bit of a positive impact. You know, as 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 we as Sri Lankans, uh, we have this part and parcel of culture where we help each other, where we stand for, for each and other. Now, for an example, I can give you one of the latest examples. You may have seen uh, for the railroad system that has been built in Sri Lanka, that tender was awarded to a Chinese entity, where there is Sri Lanka is known for IT. Americans, Europeans, British, the Germans are coming to here, and our idiots give. A tender for that sort of a tech um, venture to the Chinese, right? If you can see, all of Sri Lankan's IT companies are rallying against the whole venture and saying, you know what, we had expertise in house in Sri Lanka, you could have given it to the Sri Lankan entity who bid alongside with Chinese. So the culture is as such, I personally believe, as an entrepreneur who started off right after A levels uh, and 18, uh, at the age of 18, there's a lot of people that helped. Uh, Sri Lankans, even in the corporate sector, are very generous. They would reach out to you, they would help you, they would nurture you, they would give you opportunity, they would believe in you when nobody even belong. Nobody in their right mind would actually believe in you at that point, but they could still believe you. Uh, as much as, of course, each coin has two sides. I personally believe, as per my experience, the little experience I have in the industry, uh, I believe that we have a very nurturing um, industry. We have a lot of support groups, a lot of individuals who would nurture the young guys coming into the industry. They will give their experience, they will give their uh, teachings, understandings, uh, so that we would do better into the coming future. Uh, I think one reason is as a culture or as a country, I might say, we look at tapping into a lot of untapped opportunities. And we have greater margin or greater opportunity of doing so if we stick together, right? For an example, um, if, if, if we take uh, the Australian market in terms of, uh, I think Sharon could um, uh, uh, enter into this more. Uh, when we started off Icon Australia in 2019, uh, this is one of the main key reasons why we moved on to Melbourne right after Dubai. Um, that's one of the key areas of markets that has been severely untapped. And if you actually compare the digital content industry in terms of content marketing, comparatively, Sri Lanka is way ahead than Australia, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane combined together, right? But if you if you actually look at agencies making an approach towards, they do it collectively. They don't do it individually because as a market, Sri Lankan market is small and we have a better chance of sticking together rather than uh, being cutthroats against each other. So for that very similar reason, I believe believe um, it, it bonds us together and, and it's, it's a kind of a nurturing environment that our culture uh, provides for us. Thanks, that's quite a positive outlook from what we expected. Um, yeah, moving on, uh, I think Akshaya. Uh, yeah, so you have engaged with a lot of women and girls. Uh, what are the most common cultural norms that has been raised, uh, which we still as a country don't address it? Like it is, it's still not out there. Is that towards Namila? I'm guessing it's yes, towards Namila. Yes, yes, that okay. is for Namila. Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, so from what I heard of your question, uh, what are some of the things that we haven't raised? So I think like Shanuki said, you know, we are used to following a certain norm or what we call culture for a really long time and we inherit these ideas from our grandparents and our parents, right? And uh, and we sometimes confuse it with religion. So sometimes what happens is, especially because I work a lot with Muslim girls and also people who follow religion really closely, uh, sometimes they find it difficult to separate the two from each other. So um, even when we ask them to sort of like think about it or like, you know, have an open mind and think about something. It's very difficult for them to because they have grown up in such a way and for a really long time thinking that this is how it's supposed to be. So, for example, even the topic of menstruation, right, very simple. Our body does it every month, happens from puberty to uh, menopause, right? It's a biological function of a girl's body, right? If you don't do it, I can't survive. I can't give birth. The whole race can't survive. The human race can't survive. But sometimes, just like Shanaki said, the taboo of it, you know, it's blood, you are soiling the planet, you're soiling places of worship, you know. Sometimes it's difficult for them to separate the two and talk about just the menstruation aspect of it. They have to sort of, uh, people sometimes have this um, 
like very uh, connected thought where they they bring religion into it or they bring some sort of a uh, very uneasy uh, feeling on it and it, they find it difficult to talk about it um there are lots of things uh, with girls that you have to raise uh, especially when you work working with muslim girls you know the simple idea of you know can you sign your own marriage contract um who is your what the question of a guardian the question of you know can you walk out of my house alone do you need to have a man with you right so there are religious texts which expl- explain it also so sometimes girls find it difficult to separate the two and say okay but the quran says this but this says this and also because uh, dulinda also mentioned religion you know like the difference between text and interpretation and things like that we are also a very katapadankarana uh, group of people right we 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 grow up we we open our brain someone put something into it and when we just mimic that whole thing for the rest of our lives so this idea of questioning something asking the hard question having a difficult conversation are very foreign things to us because we're so used to thinking okay the culture is the best part of our country and our heritage or whatever but we don't really know what culture is and we think culture is connected to these things that we can't talk about and it's supreme um so quit the question of guardianship the, the question of you know the our marriage contracts those are more specific to muslim women but when you talk about women in general you know um we we don't learn about sexual health reproductive health sexual education so we grow up thinking okay it's something the man has to only uh my parents are here the that's something that only the men are supposed to uh, gain something from it is not, not not an equal or mutual thing and it's understanding of our bodies the whole you know who has permission to touch you the, those simple things simple things like that um uh i i will mean, you know, google for the word culture the the spot, the group of texts that appear is that it's a it's a manifestation of human intellectual accomplishment that means throughout history it's what humans have achieved so due for that period of time what humans thought okay this is it this is the best thing we've got this is the technology that works but we also need to understand what work then might not work well here and you know it's okay to sort of change things up you know uh, a lot of the times the e- easiest thing when 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 people ask us you know oh you know cover yourself up don't show too much of skin but uh, when you look at frescoes or, or all these uh, painted things in sri lanka you see a lot of people are topless right and even in in, in even take the question in, uh, talk about uh, india with all these rape cases and even in sri lanka that simple question of why people can't talk about sex when india you know wrote the kama sutra you know it, it makes no sense right so it's it's that ability for for young girls also to to question something that they're so used to uh, following simply i think i did a small detour but i hope i ended yes. up to where you want yes good uh thank you navida so the next question is for sharan what are the uh, what are the most common cultural norms that you think affect behavior and mentality that's such a loaded question but i will try my best to answer it so i'll i'll try and reflect it as to um what affected me as terms of cultural norms uh growing up i'm tamil uh i've my grandfathers grandmothers everyone's hindu my mom's hindu past fa- late father was hindu um but growing up in an international school um with what people defined as a cool uh, fair skin uh, if you're buddhist or christian you're cooler um made me really question as to if i am tamil that means i cannot fit in um and it really made me push away my culture more and more which i've embraced over the last few years but for the longest time i thought oh my god like even my surname it's okay if people mistake it um like because it's a tamil surname like nobody can pronounce it um and even if it's uh in a situation where uh, people are just like i would skip prayers because i i wouldn't uh, i would think it's uncool uh, i would do all of these things because uh, because of all of these things in school right 
um so growing up i always thought like being tamil was a was a was a factor and was like a was a disadvantage if you ever mentioned that you were tamil or if you ever mentioned that you were hindu in any any setting um that's part of like one of the cultural norms and that i thought was the real thing uh the other thing that i saw that was really confusing to me in terms of like gender and all of that stuff is um where tamils and hindus i i'm not sure about other religions i'm sure you guys can correct me or like inform me of that but if you are on your periods you cannot enter the prayer room because you're seen as impure um and that is confuses me to this day um so all of these things growing up as a tamil boy i'm just like super confused and i just wanted to push all of that culture away and just just be a sri lankan um and just forget about all of my tamil roots and forget all about like what happened in jaffna and all of those things just avoid talking about it just because of fear of what could happen and what blah blah blah, blah. um and i think a lot of it is to do with um schoolings because like not like our parents like uh, tamil parents they will make you pray tuesday friday they will make you go vegetarian tuesday friday parents tamil parents won't stop you from doing that obviously i didn't listen but that's that's me um but schools is where it, it really is flawed because they don't really teach you to embrace your culture they don't really teach you to um say that it's okay to be a certain um religion that we all Sri Lankan nobody really says that um there's no classroom session that really puts us together and gives us that unification um that really affected my thought process growing up like i always thought like being tamil was always a disadvantage um and i never really saw it so it is this beautiful uh, colorful culture full of history um and that's something that i learned when i was like 23 when we should be embracing it from our childhood um so that's one aspect of it but when it comes to what was what was the last part of your question again so the common cultural norms that affect behavior and mentality yeah so yeah so that has affected my behavior in terms of like embracing my tamil culture um in terms of other things like where um when when you're a when you're a single parent kid uh, there used to be comments uh, by teachers uh by uh, family members that would tell you that you would not be as as successful because you don't have two parents um there would i would get comments from people saying because you do not have a two parent unit you probably won't get through high school so you have to see what your options are um and this is when i was like 14 15 doing my o levels um so there is a lot of like stigma around like you have to have two parents to survive uh, tamil people have this sort of thing all of these things are like built up in our heads based on like cultural norms and stigmas or what people believe to be the right way of living um and i think we need a lot of changes to happen based on that and obviously people like shanuki are doing amazing things in like, like she said mirroring uh, what's actually happening in the in the world based on other people's opinions and actions and experiences um and a lot of the things that have affected Uh, just to touch on my mental health as well is because like i've been so divided and so separated from who i am as a person because i've been hearing all of these other things that i should be or should become or sh- cannot become or cannot uh, be so yeah i hope that answers your question yes it did but uh, sharan just uh, just another question adding on to that uh you've you've interacted with a lot of people like um mental to help them with their mental health things like that so uh have you had any instances where you've seen people having the same problem that you did years back like they have had this inferior complex because of their culture and how oh, did you absolutely. like how, how what, what what did you do to help them like um i i'm asking you this question because i've had the same problem that you have had because i'm also from a tamil background and my fam- entire family is hindu and i think when i was very young even i i've been taught to not do certain things like for example you don't talk to your dad about periods which is not okay i mean so i don't understand why we shouldn't do it and i've had a lot of people ask me what do i do to like tell me make my mom understand that i can talk about this to my dad so have you had instances like that yeah firstly just to clarify obviously i don't help anyone with their mental health i'm not a certified therapist <laughs> yeah, or okay. psychologist but i listen i listen I, i'm yeah. just a friendly ear for them to speak um but when it, oh, so many 
so many so many people reach out to me especially uh, girls who are darker skin toned who are tamil and the bullying uh, that they go through in schools is absolutely atrocious um and they talk to me and they're just like they're just so confused about what they're supposed to do and how they feel and and i the first question i ask is how have you spoken to your parents about it um and they're just like no like how can i talk to my parents about like what's going on and i'm just like why and they're just like no this is not a conversation that uh, amma and appa will have with me you know like this is not a conversation we normally have it's always about studies or eating or whatever so like we're so as a, as a tamil culture we're so used to not i mean i'm sure other cultures as well to a certain extent but as a tamil culture we're so we're so we're so uh, used to not opening up and not talking about serious issues that we should be talking about and just like why don't you just try talking to your mom and dad about like how you're feeling and how you're treated uh, because when i was bullied in my first school i didn't tell my mom um she found out from another teacher and she pulled me out of that school uh i was bu- being bullied by a kid and also a teacher um and there was a bit of racism involved but i didn't tell my mom she found out from someone else um so if you're ever in that situation i can't really answer towards how girls should talk to their uh, fathers about um uh about um, menstruation but like that's the thing right because older generations are so used to not talking about these things because their fathers and mothers have told them like not to talk about these these things and it seems impure and like nabila said it's seen as this as this um disgusting um thing but it's not it's it's literally you need it to survive you need for, need it for human uh, nature to to exist and to thrive um so i can't really answer that question but yeah girls uh, especially tamil girls uh, who are especially darker skin toned message me all the time saying that they're bullied in school all right uh over to pranit we can move forward yeah and if if there's anyone else who'd like to add on to what sharon said and what aksha asked please feel free to do so um yeah i'd like to like i mentioned yeah it's that's okay simply because i'm really good at doing that um <laughs> no opinion um i i think even in the conversation itself today uh is kind of reflective about what's happening in society where there's a complete misinterpretation and confusion of what this word culture even means it, because things like the patriarchy because things like religious misinterpretations and uh, because things like uh, individual opinions have kind of come in and blurred the lines and made us believe that something is cultural when it's not so cultural practices that we accept as cultural practices today are really not even un- they don't even go under the definition of culture uh it, it's it's just behaviors that have formed and that we tend to make an excuse saying oh that's our culture and therefore you know this is it uh things like dress how how we are allowed to dress to how we are allowed to speak to each other to uh issues like racism and sexism is not part of the culture of the country but it's just that we have we are calling it culture we are kind of using that language to kind of get away <laughs> with it and give us a sense of impunity saying that's sri lankan culture so therefore you know uh, so i just want to say that that even when you ask about what is culture to people each person will have a different interpretation of that word because we don't understand what it is ourselves sorry thank you for coming to my yeah channel. yeah thanks yeah that was a good addition to that question <laughs> um yeah uh, so i think we've all established the fact that we see as see culture as something that is not stagnant it's something that is always fluid something that we'd like to see evolving um i mean are, are we together on that is if there's someone who would yeah cool um but then there is also a culture that there are that we'd like to hold on to something that might that we might tell ourselves that we grew up with it and even if we kind of trace it back we can understand yeah maybe this is something that is unique to our culture but it is something that also needs to change so how do we kind of balance it out in terms of understanding what is our heritage and what has been passed on to us or or or, or are you always saying that culture no matter what is something that should always evolve and something that should always move forward open to anyone by the way 
Um, okay, I'll, I'll take a quick turn on that. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll relate this to Shanki's first answer initially. I think it's 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 a factor that we cannot uh, challenge that culture at almost all points are intertwined by or rather with a particular religion right it comes the, if you if you trace it down the source of any particular culture there is a snack of a religion that is uh, that goes along with it now i tend to believe i, I think um, th- this can this can relate to many of the monotheism religions that is around the world uh, including monotheism or not i believe the the fundamental concept of a religion would be there is one individual who is either uh, a person out of this world who is god or there's a there's a certain specific individual whose centric can around which the entire thing is built right to answer your question how do we define what is culture how do we define which component is there inside culture or not i take a very 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 sensible approach now let's say i can explain this much more better uh, in a catholicism point of view because i all my life i've been a catholic and i and i went to a catholic college i know the culture pretty um, um, deeply and um, um, you know over the past few years i've taken the trouble to actually learn i think it's just not me if you actually take a look at it during the covid quarantine Uh, harvard um, offered a lot of free uh, uh, courses online right now one of these courses was christian scripture and in depth knowledge of christian scripture it's not just christian all the religions all the religions so i was very, i'm very fascinated by muslim i have a lot of muslim friends i learned about even the quran right uh, you'd be surprised that there's about 30000 odd Catholics in Sri Lanka who took that course. So this this shows um, uh, this shows technically the uh, the in depth knowledge that people want to have a look at. Right. Coming back to the point, how do we understand which component should be inside the culture or which component should not be inside culture? I'll twist and turn that question into the fact. which what so because i like i told you most of these components which are detrimental in culture comes with a divine aspect all right why do we have to do so because god told so right then comes down to the logical perspective i look up to god in in any other religions case the person who is the centric uh, component that person should be the most logical person of all time in my understanding i believe god himself is the most logical person if we are a buddhist lord buddha is the most uh, logical person in the case of um, the religion of islam allah is the most logical person then you ask yourself in a logical perspective you being given brains not to follow something that some person says some other person's interpretation of god god god's will is you been given brains to debate logically think would a person in their right mind with a person in their right senses want this or not simple as that right if if my religion says let's say hypothetically my religion says you should shave your head in the month of december hypothetically right then i ask myself okay what good does it do to god the almighty one if one individual like me just shaves my head on the month of december doesn't make any sense right so anybody the pope himself can say it i won't do it why because i have a rational god gave me a brain to think and i'm thinking and he's the most logical person and a logical person in their right mind would not want another person to be shaving their head in a particular month of the year simple as that if you do this simple test to almost many of the cultural elements that are in sri lankan culture irrespective from which where it originates from whether it originates from the religion of islam or catholic or buddhism or it just comes from the culture itself in sri lanka you would ideally understand that most of it doesn't actually make sense and thus proof for you that those elements do not fit to be in the culture simple as such um just I, just before we move on i just like to ask a follow up question so i think 
a lot of that was based on how we perceive it and how we change it for ourselves right so how would how would we encourage a broader uh, demography of people to do the same just is it is it as simple as um follow follow basically what is logical yeah is because, it, is it as, well, because you you see yeah. my, my point of view is i have a brain you have a brain mm-hmm. right if i can judge my 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 point of view is no component of culture cannot go unjudged simple as such each and every component should be judged and you can judge it as per your purview and i could judge it as per my purview and understanding and expectations right you're free to make a judgment on that purview but by no means am i supposed to live according to your perception or your judgment on it because in my belief i believe culture should be the way that we interact with culture should be specific and unique to each and every one of us because we have by by no means we can't judge now for an example let's say the more yes uh yeah just to just to continue and and he's got stuck in many interesting pose or so it's like mid range uh yeah, um i i i agree on some of the things that dilip said and uh, i i would like to respectfully uh disagree on some others this thing about uh, individual interpretations and about uh being logical about the way you approach it individually when it comes to culture culture is also something that is collective um you know it is not an individual thing it is social it is uh, it is community based uh so uh, i don't know if if each of us interprets it the way we want to and we behave in the way we want to whether you can actually call that a national culture or a community culture uh, at the end of the day um uh, to answer your original question of what should we keep and what should we change uh, especially when it comes to things like heritage values and practices and behaviors that have been passed down the generations um i think it's about us asking ourselves like regardless of what religion we are born into regardless of what family background we are born into every child is is taught and conditioned whatever religion all religions teach you the fundamental differences between good and bad right and wrong right and i think uh, regardless of what religion you come from you will have a sense of what is good and what is bad evil and not uh, so i think it's it's just holding that lens and then questioning certain practices certain social behaviors is it causing harm is it ethical is it moral does it make you feel good at the end of the day because if it is inflicting some sort of pain on someone or something else then there's there's a question in our minds like what our religion has taught us is good uh, might not be in our cultural practice necessarily be healthy or be responsible when it comes to taking care of our communities or showing off something calling it culture and be proud of it so i think if we can just tap into that human the base human insight of what is good what is bad and make our decisions collectively on that if something has been passed down through the centuries and we call it culture but if it is harmful in today's day and age the interpretation of so many things are different we are learning more we are evolving as societies we are we are um there are political correctnesses coming around we are learning to sort of accept differences and there's there's like a more bigger awareness of diversity uh and respect is taking a new form uh, you know uh, the the right to dignity uh is something that we are more conscious of so if we can look at it through that lens and say okay what i have inherited from my country is this actually a good thing is this actually something that i can be proud of as a country that will give you i guess a kind of a yardstick a kind of a measuring uh, ability of is this something i should retain or is it something that needs to change and can i change it to be better it doesn't mean get rid of it completely but how can i change it or how can we change it to still be around still be something we are proud of but uh, i mean 
And if you if you look at the way the world works, every single country, every continent, every corner of this planet changes over time, and cultures evolve. That is what culture is. It evolves. It's social. Um, so I think it's it's just that we have to stop ourselves from believing that nothing should change, and then we can start questioning of what is good and what is bad. A heritage can mean so many different things. That, I mean. There are cultures that have uh, heritages of slavery. Does that mean it's okay? It's not. Uh, so you know, we have to question ourselves, and we have to police ourselves at some point. Yeah, I think that's so well put. I'm I'm, I'm gonna pitch in for like a second, but I'm gonna first ask Nabila if she wants to say anything because I remember the last and first panel Nabila was on. She didn't really say anything because she was never asked. So Nabila, would you like to say anything before I before I chime in? No, you go ahead. I'll give a. I'll. I'll, oh, okay. uh, I'll yeah, I'm still like okay. fi- fixing in my brain. No, I I just wanted to like echo what Chanukhi is saying. Um, culture has become highly influenced. It's ever changing, right? Like we we can't say that it's an it's it's a it's a. All all of us know that uh, culture is has come to an extent where it's highly influenced by our uh, the people that we surround ourselves with, social media, um, Google, all of these things highly influence what we do, the decisions we make, and it 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 has a ripple effect as to how we influence other people as well. And the bigger your influence is, the bigger you create a culture behind the decisions you make, behind the uh, things you say, behind the things you do, and that becomes like norm. Because you created that culture, um, so yeah, I just I just want to echo what Shanu Kiri was saying. I completely agree. Like I, I I I truly believe that there are so many things that have come down that obviously now we're checking ourselves and policing ourselves that are not right. But at that time, whoever thought it was the right thing to do built a culture around it, and then everyone followed that person or that group of individuals um, to continue whatever they were doing. Um, like for example, the elephants used in Paraharas. Like look. We all know that that's not right. We all have seen how elephants are treated in that, but it's seen as this, or oh, because we shall back it up with religion. Um, it is it is needed in Paraharas, but it, we know it's a highly money making uh, thing that they're trying to just put in there and just guise it under culture so that they can just keep protecting it. Um, and look, the the more that we check ourselves and the people around us, the more that we can keep distinguishing between right and wrong. Um, everyone knows the difference between right and wrong, just like Shanuki says. It's just that we actively choose to ignore it. That's where the difference is. Um, but yeah, I don't know, Shanuki. Please tell me if I'm wrong, but I just want to echo in that. Completely agree. Yeah. Cool. Before we actually move on to Dulit, uh, Dulinda, I'm sorry. Um, to finish this thought, um, Nabila, would you like to add something to that? Oh, have you finished your thought? Yeah, so I, I have uh, two things to mention, right? So the first thing is, you know, when we talk yeah. about what do we want to take on and what do we want to let go of, you know, we have to ask ourselves the hard question. Like, for example, if, if since we mentioned religion a lot today also, you know, like back in the day before Islam came into the Middle East, we, uh, girl, baby children, like girls, were being buried alive. So as soon as they were born, oh, it's a girl, we, this is of no use to society and they would be buried alive. And then Islam came in and talk, spoke about gender equality and so on. And, you know, the prophet also mentioned, you know, don't do this. Don't don't kill girls like this, right? So um, if, you, if you ask the hard question, like, you know, who does this benefit, like this act of, you know, burying a girl or this act of shushing about topics like menstruation or this act of, you know, women not being able to make decisions about their own bodies, the fact that men have to make those decisions. If you question those cultures and ask, you know, who does this benefit? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? If we are able to have that conversation, then we get the answer immediately, you know, should we carry this on or should we should we leave it behind? You know, we are allowed to make mistakes. This does not work for us for the future and we can take, uh, take it away, right? Uh, I think one word that Dulin the mentioned in his answer at the beginning was the word debate right uh what we should take forward from our cultures is this idea of critical thinking that all of our cultures all of our scholars had so even in the middle east with uh, with islam we had amazing scholars male and female who used to just sit around the table and just argue with each other and they would put forward 
some theory and they might, they said you know what this might not even be true tomorrow but i'm going to say it that idea of being comfortable to say something and be wrong tomorrow say something and you know have that flexibility of mind so that is something from our cultures that we can take forward unfortunately what happens a lot of the time is we're so comfortable with saying you know what we we'll keep it this way because it gives me so much of power that we leave things to be in a certain way you know the second thing i want to mention is about culture sensitivity now if we all follow the same culture even if we come from the same land it's just not going to work because we don't right so it's about asking yourself does what about it does it bother you that someone different from you has a different culture right so you can have a different race or a different ethnic group following a different tradition or a culture and it might bother you or it might question you it might make you feel awkward it's about asking those questions within yourselves and also interacting with the other group also it's about that's the idea for culture sensitivity you know you are able to find you and be like okay can i learn from something is it actually affecting me in a negative way or is it i'm just uncomfortable to open up and learn if you look at sri lanka just as an island you can go to every community and every community will be so different it's not only the muslims it's not only the burghers or it's not only a specific community everyone has their own thing that they like to do right so when we go for example when when we did a tour around the island once in the eastern province i was kicked out of a school for not being dressed appropriately even though i was wearing a hijab and all of these uh, even though i was covered head to toe it's because i had to understand in that area if i was wearing jeans with a t-shirt and hijab that community might not welcome me it's been understanding of that when we were in badulla i had to wear a skirt i couldn't be wearing pants because the sinhala buddhist community there was so so strict about what women were uh, allowed to wear so i mean i'm not uh, I'm, i'm just uh, not talking about the whole clothing aspect of it but because that's wrong you, know, you can't tell women what to wear that's that's separate but if what i want to focus on the point is that we all have our different things that we like to do we have all have, have our different traditions that we we like to do but sometimes we're not accustomed to it as much as they are or someone else is so is it bothering us why is it bothering us and how can we be more sensitive to each other and so that we can learn about more things and argue with each other and debate on things so those are the two um two things that i'd like to bring forward because we live in a country that's just so multicultural and you know multi-everything all right thanks um so that was a lot of community and sort of common understanding then i think all three of your questions and it'll be interesting to see what um dulinda would have to say when he get ah are you here would you would you like to add something to that dulinda um, no i was kind of lost you in the middle yes sorry about that sorry about that i was just um, i think i completely agree with um, what nabila said as well and um, just to just to add to what everybody said i think i have a bit of a perception that the interpretation of culture it needs to be unique and independent to each and every person and nobody nobody's perception or nobody's interpretation should be held valid for another person right um which is um which is first which is technically what um i am what i was trying to reiterate that uh, the individual perception and the individual per se the word debate you need to have within yourself and you need to form up your own uh, perception about what culture is and what are the components that should be there and shouldn't be there all right thanks